Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to fly a visual approach with the automatics. Uh, this is how a few companies nowadays like to fly visual approaches in Boeing aircraft, uh, only because it reduces pilots' workload by quite a big proportion in comparison to just doing it the old school way. That's as long as you know the procedures well and you know exactly what to do and when to do it, otherwise uh, this can actually be harder than just literally turning off the flight directors, getting rid of the automatics and flying manual. So what you see here in the video at the moment is I'm just setting it up um, to make sure I've got a 4 mile ring, 10 mile ring around the airport. We're going to be flying this into Marrakesh. So initially uh, what you do is you create an RX point uh, as you saw at the very beginning of the video. Uh, and to create an RX point you just hit departure and arrival page on the FPC go into the arrival leg, find the runway that you want to land at. Don't, just the runway, not an approach, just find the runway and then click that runway and it will say uh, miles, a flight path angle. Just put five miles in there and that will generate a three degree vertical path down that your VNAV uh, should be able to follow. So, uh, also you can see I'm just setting up the uh, the ref speeds and things like that. <clears throat> I had a little bit of an issue with the uh, the simulator doing this for some reason um, uh, so I had to reset it again as you can see it's not on the PFD display there's no VREF bug uh, indicated down there so it didn't actually set and I think that was due to me not filling in the performance page correctly at the beginning of the flight because I just did a very quick takeoff to get in the air to show you guys how to conduct this approach so yeah I think it was the cost index there you go as you can see it's the cost index for some reason I just put 30 in it's good it's good cost index um, but we're not really going to be using it so, uh, next thing, obviously, just for sourcing out the descent page, um, putting some, uh, yeah, putting a transition uh, level in there uh, for the future. And we're going to shoot the approach. Uh, basically, we're going to this point uh, called Ramim, which is a waypoint I just found uh, on the waypoint tab on the MCP panel. <coughs> and we're going to fly from Ramim to Rinpa. And then I joined that up with the RX 2A point, as you can see. And then that goes down to the runway 28 point. Now, in real life, doing this, it is actually very accurate uh, and very good. Uh, but uh, in the simulator on PMDG, for some reason, the LNAV track, trying to keep that center line, it's just, it's always off ever so slightly. And it just looks a little bit wrong, um, as you'll see in the next few minutes. <clears throat> so now we've we engaged LNAV, VNAV. We've selected a lower altitude, 4,500 feet. I think that's about the minimum safe altitude in the area, so that's an okay altitude. Remember, this is a visual maneuver, so yes, I know we're flying it with the automatic. Yes, I know we're flying it with the magenta alone, but it is visual, so you just look outside, really. Just use the automatics, fly where you want to go. Um, all the clearances were just for the you know for the second video. We'll just say they've been given already by the tower uh, coming into Marrakesh. Uh, I like Marrakesh for this because I've done the visual approach to Marrakesh a few times. It's easy, it's nice, they don't hassle you in real life, and uh, you just get it straight in really, and that's quite nice, especially when it's good weather conditions. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so what we do in theory is you don't need to get rid of the flight directors at all, because um, they're there to guide you and help you down to the runway, but uh, obviously if they give you false information uh, on the approach portion of the flight, then get rid of them, just recycle them, get them out of the way. The reason why you want to recycle them and not just turn them off completely is because when you press that toga button, I mean, actually this is wrong what I'm saying because even when you press the toga button when they're not engaged, when the, sorry, when the flight directors aren't switched on, even when they're not on and you press toga, the flight director climb bars will come up for a go around. But recycle them anyway, it gets rid of them, they're there, they're ready to go, you press toga if you want to go around and that'll give you the, the pitch bar uh, for the go around and then you can give yourself some heading select and it just makes the go around a lot easier, especially if you manually fly it, uh, like some companies like uh, to make you do. <coughs> I, I don't know why they don't let you put the autopilot in early, some policy down the line, something's gone wrong and um, they like you to do it that way, which is fair enough, it gets exciting. So as you see, we're approaching Ramim and then we we'll do a left turn to Rimpa. I put a hard altitude, 4,500 feet at Rimpa. Now some of you might think that's a little bit high, but it's not um, because the area Elevation of the aerodrome here in Marrakesh is about 1,500 feet. So the rule of, th the rule of thumb is 3,000 feet at 10 miles. So 3,000 feet at 10 miles. So 3,000 plus 1,500, 4,500 feet. 
So we're going to try and pass her in for a 4 5, and then we're going to disassemble a 3 degree path <coughs> down to the runway. I do apologize because I do an app been a little bit sick recently, so I'll try and explain this as well at the same time. It's not easy. Um, so, Rinpa onwards. So, the minimums for this one as well, you know, you can see I've selected a minimum on the captain's PFD display. 2,045 feet. Again, why that? The aerodrome elevation, 1,545. Uh, 1, so you just select 500 feet, because that can be your landing gate, for instance. Uh, VMC landing gate. Visual condition landing gate. So I've gone vertical speed uh, right now because the VNAV is not very good in this uh, software. So um, it was what it would do is it does what it does in the cruise descent is where it will descend at a thousand feet per minute uh, when it's below the path, waiting to capture the path. Except the path that it's following for the approach is quite shallow, so it should follow that shallow approach. It shouldn't go below it. So what I've done is I've now gone back to VNAV. Uh, because it's, I'm back on the path, and it should keep it now, in theory. So there's Rimper. You've selected a lower altitude, 3,200 feet, which is fine. That's the RX altitude, as you can see, 3187. Uh, so yeah, 3,200 gives us a little bit of a, a bit safety buffer there. Closest altitude to that altitude in there. Got auto rate 3 set, we've got the VRF, we've got the minimums, 500 feet above the ground set. We're all good to go. We'll say the approach checklist is done. We've got some courses in there as well. That's just as guidance. It's not actually needed at all for this. Course select is only good for a VOR or um, a localized one. So you can see the runway ahead. So we've got some red lights ahead, but that's fine. Uh, we're approximately on profile. We know that. Um, the pappies in this game aren't great. Uh, the, the, there's not a lot of things. Uh, the software is actually quite good in general, but it's just there are some small things that don't work. Um, so yeah, two miles, that's the next thing we're going to do. Two miles, uh, approaching RX28 point, so top right hand side of the navigation display, because it's 3.1 miles at the moment. So when that gets down to about two, what we're going to do is we're going to select on the altitude window, we're going to select 2,100 feet, which is basically our minimums, and we're going to make sure we're in VNAV path with speed intervent. So VNAV path is indicated on the FM, uh, the FMA annunciator uh, page on the PFD, so it's going to be the top, uh, the top right hand side says VNAV PTH, Papa Tango. In a path. Okay, so we've got it there. So there we go. Selected 2100, two miles to go, 2100, in a path for speed incident. So the winds, we've got a little bit of headwind here. So we're going to put the gear down early, uh, go flaps 15, uh, get the landing checklist down to flaps down. So the starts are just continuing. It's so going to put all the landing lights on, imagine we're clear to land, check the recall, speed brakes armed with a green light, gears down with 3 3, uh, order brake 3 is set. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're just going to keep going with the flaps. So we're going to go select flaps 25. Um, we're above the speed limit here, so 162 knots, so flat 40 straight away should do. <coughs> we're going to add some uh, speed onto our VREF. It's not just going to be VREF plus 5. We're going to add maybe VREF plus, plus 8, plus 9. Uh, only because of the, the wind, we've got a headwind of 16 knots. That's making the speed uh, fluctuate quite a bit. So as you can see, we're coming down now. Uh, the next thing we're going to try and do, uh, obviously complete landing check. There's sorry, flaps 40, 40 with a green light there, and the landing lights are on, so clear to land. Landing checks are done. The next thing we're going to do is that we're obviously we're looking outside throughout this whole maneuver. I'm just guiding you through the technical aspects of it. Um, so we're looking outside, two reds, two whites. We're looking good. We are so deviated off the center line right now. In real life, it wouldn't be like this. So I, also, the auto throttle was doing something a little bit weird. Um, so I just took that out, just set manual thrust here. So for this type of approach, this type of weight, uh, you know, with about 60 tons uh, coming in, flats 40, you want about 62 to 67% of thrust depending on the weather got a headwind you might have a little bit more like 65 66 but uh, yeah we'll, ha we'll have about 65% for this approach so coming down 1,000 feet bar 1,000 checks one select must approach altitude uh, so 6,000 feet really I'm about to select it so what shouldn't have happened is the autopilot should not have gone into altitude hold it should not have done that in real life uh, it wouldn't do that so we recycle the flight directors there and now we just disconnect everything and fly manually it speeds dragging off Add a little bit more power, 70%. Keep that three degree uh, path going with the flight pitch vector there. There you can see, correcting that lateral angle. We're all visual now, basically. So we're just flying manually. 750 feet per minute to 800 feet per minute, ready to descend is what we need. Obviously, if you're getting a little bit too low, you know, head for 600 feet per minute. Um, and if you're getting a little bit too high, maybe 800, 900 feet per minute. You don't want excessive rates of descent. Try and get two reds, two whites. You know, one white, three reds, not ideal. Uh, you know, two, you know, one uh, <coughs> one red, three whites as well, not ideal, especially close to the runway. So yeah, uh, 
Um, buildings are quite close in this, uh, they seem to be, but it's okay. We've had the minimum cool, we'll say continue. So we're just gently, small corrections, nothing too dramatic. Small corrections down to the runway. We've still got quite a bit of power on for this, um, but it's looking more correct now. So yeah, you go, two reds, two whites, looking good. Uh, now I'm ignoring the pappies totally. The, the ideal approach here is to get 50 feet above the threshold of the runway. So if there is the threshold, 50. 50. That's what you want. 30, check, hold, you know, reduce the power, just let it sink in and smash. There you go, nice positive landing. Speed brakes are up, reverses are normal, maximum reverses, leave the auto brake in, it will slow the plane down and it will stop. And that is your visual approach completed. And we'll just bring the aircraft to a halt here. And that's it, that's how you do it. Uh, if you've got any questions, just you know, leave a comment, I'll try and answer you. And uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Tell me why you didn't like it. Cool. Thanks guys, see you again shortly.